Peter, I was, I mean, I'm sure everyone was pretty shocked by that story of the little kid from the lovely Catholic school in your electorate <laughs> way back in the day asking you what, what on earth had the Americans done for us. Um, it, it reminded me of um, a piece I read over the weekend by Neil Ferguson, the British historian who now is resident in America. And he was talking about what's going on on campuses in the US at the moment and how uh, several generations ago, the sort of Jack Kennedy generation, the honour boards at Harvard University, where Jack Kennedy himself had gone, correct me if I'm wrong, Brett, uh, were filled with, um, with, with their, their graduates. They had gone to serve in the Pacific War in, in countless battlefields. And, and they were the elite, the cream of the crop of American society. They were the intellectuals, the, the political leaders, the business leaders. Now the honour boards of those universities, military honour boards, are not, I mean, they're just, they aren't there. They, they don't exist. Those people at universities are, are fighting for activist causes that, quite frankly, seem very out of touch with the things that really matter. What... <coughs> Peter, I mean, this is a big question, but what, what's gone wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You um, probably don't need that, but you can boom. Uh, <laughs> as I was saying, I, I think if, if you'd been part of the generation that um, lived through the Second World War, you admired the Americans. You mm. might have gone on your nerves a bit. Mm. I remember my father always used to say, apart from the Japanese, the thing he feared the most was the American bombers coming over New Guinea, because you were just as likely to be hit by friendly fire. Mm. They'd come across and you'd all duck, and then you'd get up and you'd fight the Japanese. Um, so there was always points of friction, but Australia knew deep in its heart that, that in fact, uh, we didn't defend our country. Mm. Um, our great powerful friends, as uh, Menzies yeah. uh, called them, mm. uh, saved Australia. Uh, and I come forward a bit um, to Vietnam. There's no doubt that Vietnam divided the United States and it divided this country. And I think a generation, and I, I came in on the tail end of Vietnam, uh, a generation um, uh, developed a feeling of anti-Americanism off mm. the back of Vietnam. Mm. Um, although I, I once heard someone say a lot of anti-Americanism is in fact exported from America itself. <laughs> you know, the, the, the real anti-Americans uh, of, of the modern age are the squad in the Congress, mm. uh, AOC and, uh, and her, her friends, they're exporting anti-Americanism all around. Um, but uh, the American campuses have been taken over like by much of the world, much of the Western world, by identity politics. Um, and uh, we all know in identity politics, evil always comes in the form of a, a white Western male uh, and, uh, and the, whose victims are, uh, you know, uh, legion, you know, whether they be Palestinians or uh, whether they be uh, indigenous people or whether they be women. Uh, these are the real sort of victims um, uh, that we have to stand up for and celebrate in modern society. Now, um, it's frightening, I think, and I've been frightened by the level of anti-Israel feeling in universities, which has just come out. It's, it's not just Palestinian students anymore, it's academics, it's you know, people with PhDs and it just sort of illustrates to me how bad the universities have gone, and uh, it's 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 happening here in Australia. It's happening at Harvard. Uh, I, the West has just lost confidence in itself. Uh, it 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 is young people are being fed this diet that in fact there's nothing to celebrate in Western culture. Western culture has basically ruined the world as we know it, uh, and uh, and it's the source of all evil. And uh, I I. I, I hope that we've reached a turning point. I hope that our political leaders are prepared to get up and defend Australia and defend uh, Western uh, culture and Western civilization. I, I think 
You may not get a hearing amongst the uh, the intellectuals of Melbourne University, but I think you'll get a hearing uh, in the suburbs, and you'll certainly get a hearing uh, in the regions and beyond. There's a lot of Australians still feel that way. Yeah, yeah. Well, I hope you're right, Peter. I mean, on the um, the sentiments here at Melbourne Uni with the recent Israel-Hamas war, I was really horrified this morning walking in off Swanston Street to see a uh, a, a light, pole, light, light post covered in um, posters of the kidnapped victims um, in Israel and they'd been torn down and defaced with Free Palestine. Yeah. Welcome to Melbourne University. Anyway, um, Brett, we were talking about this before on the podcast which will be pre published in a few weeks so I'll, I hope you can all tune into that but um, Jack Kennedy's father was uh, an American diplomat. He was British, uh, sorry, American ambassador to Britain. Uh, and he was a strong isolationist, representing a, a, a tradition in US foreign policy, uh, and it, you know, quite a prominent yeah. tradition. This is always a concern for Australia. Uh, we, we do not benefit from American isolationism. We benefit from an America engaged in the world standing up for democracy. Jack Kennedy did that. He he deeply believed in American power as a force for good to uphold a rules-based order that, that benefits us. Uh, the, the trends, though, I mean, we can't rely on that um, always being the case. Um, US presidents change and, and so does the, the, the colour and nature of their administration. How do we how do we keep America interested in in us and the rules based order? Question. Do you need this? No, I, no. I'll, I'll speak loudly. Uh, it's funny. I thought you might ask me a question along these lines. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I wasn't. It's one diplomat to another. <laughs> but I've got a, a quote here. This is written in 19, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in 1946, mm -hmm. just after the Second World War. The American wrote Dixon Wechter, His name was. Um, Australia knows clearly that she has far more to fear from American isolation than from American intervention. Her worry is not our aggression, but our indifference, the reputation of our foreign policy for irresponsibility. Mm -hmm. And Peter's quite right, he put his finger on it. We, we, we want America to be involved, but when it suits us. You know, everyone, uh, our complaint about the United States, Peter, when you were at uni, would have been, you know, post, you know, Vietnam, uh, America's acting as the world's policeman. How terrible, how terrible is that? But far worse than that is when there's no sheriff at all. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. how would Australia go in, 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 a, in, an, in a Southeast Asia where America wasn't engaged, when they didn't care, where isolationism became the new rule. We would not only flounder, we would be in all sorts of trouble. So, to, to my mind, Australia must ensure that the United States remains engaged. But it also, the American, it has to be imprinted on the United States, as it was on young Jack Kennedy, that they're doing it not just for the good of Australia or indeed uh, the rest of the world, but they're doing it for the good of the United States. Yeah. It's in their public interest to do so. And that's what Jack Kennedy learned that. And he had, had to persuade his isolationist father that he was wrong. And in the end, Jack Kennedy was right. You know, And thank God that America did engage and didn't just fall back to the mud of the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. Um, You'd agree with that, John, wouldn't you? Absolutely. We've discussed it. Let's set it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Peter, you obviously, as um, as treasurer and um, deputy leader, you you engaged heavily with the relationship with China, and and post politics have been heavily involved in it as well. Um, Prime Minister's off to to China, I think, on Friday or Saturday. Uh, things seem to have stabilised there, but. Uh, how you know how how is Australia as a as a, you know, a, a deep believer on in a um, 
a global order where the US is preeminent. How, how are we to, to navigate the next few years when China is intent on disrupting the order that has suited us so, so well since World War II and that we see under huge challenge, not least in the Middle East, now in Europe and, and of course in our own region? Well, well, the outcome of the Second World War gave um, Australia probably a seat at the table well, well beyond anything it justified in terms of population. Mm. Um, yeah. uh, you know, for example, all the post-war institutions, um, the UN, the World Bank, the IMF, you know, we get a seat at the table. And uh, we were the original um, members of all of these institutions and, and, and that gave us a lot of influence. Of course, it gave the US a lot of its influence as well. Mm. The US essentially became the world's guarantor and policeman, maybe rivaled by the Soviets for a while, but, uh, but certainly um, after, the, after the Second World War, that suited us. Uh, this was our friend. Uh, culturally, we were, we were friends. We spoke the same language, you know, and, 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 and the post- World War II order suited us and yeah. it suited them. Um, it doesn't really suit the Russians and it doesn't really suit the Chinese. Mm. They, they really don't, don't accept that order. Um, certainly the, the Chinese don't accept that order. And uh, they will be quite happy if that order was disrupted. Um, for a while I used to lead the uh, Australia-China high-level dialogue with Gupta from Beijing. And uh, I remember um, a general of the People's Liberation Army, um, the sort of, uh, they were always the most forthright in attacking us, you know, they're saying, why don't you just do what the Americans tell you to do? And it, the answer was, <laughs> we act in our interests, the American act in their interest, you the Chinese, you act in your interest, but you've got to understand our interests and the American interests are, are, are very similar. We see the world. We don't do it because the president rings up the prime minister and says, do this or do that. We do it because it's legitimately in our own interests. I, I don't think the, the Chinese really understand that. The, you know, in their mind, there are great powers and the great <coughs> powers give orders and everybody else follows because that's the way they expect the Middle Kingdom operates like that. So that's the way they expect uh, that the... Uh, the United States probably operates as well. I've never had any problem disagreeing with Americans, um, ever. Uh, they've got a great tradition of free speech. Uh, but as long as you realise, at the end of the day, the probabilities are our interests are going to align. Mm. Uh, you can be a, 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 an open and a forthright <laughs> interlocutor with them. You, you can't be with the Chinese, you see. There's a different <laughs> attitude they have to life. They, Great powers give orders, and you're not a great power, so you should just follow our orders. Um, and that just really illustrates the difference between our culture and, uh, and, and their culture. So I, I think we've got to be honest in our dealings with China. I don't think we can be pushed around. Um, if you let them push you around, they will get more aggressive. Um, and I think actually sort of taking all of those... Uh, trade sanctions and not changing our policy one iota sort of said to them, this country's not a pushover. We're, 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 we're not a South Pacific island. Mm. We're a mid middle ranking power. You know, we're a decent country. Australians don't often understand this, by the way. We are a middle ranking power. They think we're a small power. No, we're a middle ranking power. Uh, we don't have to be pushed around by anybody. Um, and we shouldn't. And we're self respecting people, and we'll be honest with you. And we'll look after our interests, and you can look after your interests. And if uh, the two of us can get along uh, on that basis, well and good. But if we can't, we'll look after our interests, and we'll, we're not going to give up our way of life and our culture. I think that was very important that the Chinese got that message, and I think they did. Thank you. Well, what I would say is um, I think Australia, over the last few years, and whatever criticisms have been laid at previous governments over the policies towards China, we have done the world a huge favour in setting the example of how to deal with that great power and attempts to bully us. And we stood up for our interests and 
and we, we were removable and we've actually ended up with a pretty good set of outcomes. The release of Cheng Lei, the abandonment of the um, the barley tariffs, um, we've, we've, we'll see the tariffs on our wine pulled back in the next six months. These are, these are all great, great outcomes and we didn't have to give anything up in order to do that. Uh, Brett and Peter, we will have to close here because our audience has a job to do, which is to buy Brett's book. <laughs> we have several copies for sale outside, which uh, Zach Gorman uh, will be able to um, sell to you, and Brett will be available for signing. A huge thank you to Peter for uh, your excellent words tonight and launching this book. Uh, thank you to Brett for allowing us to host your launch. And one final spruik, on the 23rd and 24th of November, if you love your Australian political history, and look, you're here, so you obviously do, uh, please join us for our conference just upstairs over there on the Menzies Ascendancy, Implementing a Liberal Agenda and Consolidating Gains, 54 to 61, a pivotal period in Australian politics, and it will be a brilliant couple of days with Paul Kelly giving the keynote and 17 other fantastic speakers from across academia, politics, diplomacy and public policy. So thank you all for coming tonight and buy up big. <laughs> <laughs>